this message. It's live, do you see it? Like a family, welcome to Nation Town TV Mobile. <laughs> I promise the believers and, and, and all of our followers, Nation Town TV coming up on 4,000 strong, that we would uh, check in tonight. And uh, for the sake of time, it was conducive for us to go ahead and, and hit y'all up uh, while we were in route. But uh, you already know what the deal is. As you can see, first and foremost, uh, before I get into my salutations, uh, let me know if y'all can hear me clearly. Because last time we did a uh, Nation Town TV on the road, uh, we had some uh, sound issues. So definitely let us know that you can hear us clearly through the comments. But uh, first and foremost, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I proudly bear witness that there is no God but Allah who mercifully appeared in the person of Master W. Fard Muhammad to whom praises are due forever. I further bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is at minimum, at least his messenger, but in fact, exalted Christ, if you understand. And I further bear witness that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, <laughs> the man himself, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is our divine leader, teacher and guide and if you understand, if you take the moat out of your out of your eyes, if you take the, the the ignorance out of your mind, he is indeed. Or if you just pick up a dictionary and look up the word, he is indeed the Messiah. And I'm missing in those three great names. I greet all 150,000 of you all watching. In the words of peace, we said in the Arabic language, "Assalamu alaikum." I'm like a family, we're going to hit this issue hard. And I definitely wanted to get an adequate amount of time to, to deal with this situation. As you know, as those who may or may not know, uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was, quote unquote, banned from Facebook and its, uh, its subsidiary Instagram. Uh, basically all the content that he had and, the, and, the, and the, the post that he had and the site that he had was essentially uh, blocked and, and wiped out. And we're not going to break on Nation Town TV Live. We're not going to break our normal program for this devil and his devilish men. We're going to keep the same tradition of always dealing with the final call cover story because this is a very important final call cover story and it's a very timely final call cover story when you consider the fact that it is uh, dealing with our brother who transitioned last week uh, emeritus minister Abdul Rahman who passed away and I think it's actually a beautiful situation I don't want to call it a coincidence and again, brothers and sisters, if y'all having any uh, issues hearing me, let me know. Uh, we'll make the necessary adjustments. But I think it's beautiful. It's actually fantastic and right on time th that we were 
celebrating the life of our brother. Not saying that it's fantastic that he transitioned. It is a, a it is always a, a, a momentous occasion for us Muslims when, when our spirit returns to Allah, who only lended it to us in the first place. But when you consider that Abdul Rahman, Minister Abdul Rahman, affectionately known as the Rock, was arguably one of the greatest defenders of Farrakhan and he was also without argument without argument one of the first defenders of Farrakhan in this dispensation of Farrakhan sitting in the seat of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and just a week ago not even a full week ago we were celebrating his life and now we find ourselves in another situation where the minister there's a there's a there's a cold red i should say as far as him being defended we should be defending him 24 7 and i'm gonna get into a little bit of that but i think it's you know it's a law <laughs> like that color purple song god is trying to tell you something i think Allah is definitely telling us something by letting us know that while he repossessed the soul and the spirit of abdul rahman I've always been a firm believer, and if you read your Holy Quran, it backs my belief up that when our loved ones transition, we can't speak of them as dead, and we also cannot act like they are dead, because the only thing that was really buried in the ground was their flesh. And if their spirit, if their attributes, uh, if there if anything about them that we love other than their flesh if that dies with them then it's our fault it's not it's not even if they were murdered no matter what ailment they had you can't blame that ailment or that murderer or whatever it was that took them away from us physically you can't blame that death on that because if the things that we loved about them from an attribute standpoint dies with them that's our fault and when you look at the many attributes that our brother, The Rock, had, the most timely attribute when you consider the time we in right now was his steadfast, aggressive, no holds bar <laughs> style of defending our beloved minister, going all the way back to when the minister decided to stand up. I also find it, you know, quite interesting that the rock even though he was born and raised in georgia he got his ex out here in los angeles and that was kind of touching for me because you know i i first you know first time i stepped foot in the mosque was in uh atlanta georgia but i got my ex uh out here in los angeles but he's a brother that's been on that front line front line for the minister and now that he's no longer physically able to do that, it's now on us to take on his mind and, 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 and defend the minister in the way that he did. Maybe not the same fashion. You, you know, we're not all built for that. But at least in the same steadfast way, shape, and form that he did. And also, I want to uh, I want to remind everyone, as we always do, Nation Town TV, make sure that uh, if you have any questions, comments, definitely hit us up. We got our executive producer, Sana Joy, on the on the case. So if she sees any comments, she'll definitely let me know. Uh, so this is even though we are, we're uh, even though we're mobile, we moving from point A to point B, like any good. Uh, good Muslim should, uh, we're still able to go ahead and, and, and deal with questions and concerns. We just on the move. Now, as far as the issue itself, the we are Farrakhan, you know, that goes without saying. When you consider the fact that that is the whole, that is the entire essence of any real leader. If you lead or seek to lead just for people to have reverence towards you to bow to you or even to worship you then you got it all wrong not only do you have it all wrong but you're more than likely going to fail 
when you look at the Jesus in the scripture, in the Bible, when you, when you listen to Paul, who was one of his best followers, even though he had the least amount of experience of being physically in the presence of Jesus, he said, let this mind be in you the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. So that's always the goal of any so-called prophet, any leader, is to actually duplicate themselves or any servant, especially serving a God. And that includes all of us, especially those of us who are registered members of the Nation of Islam. It's our job to duplicate ourselves and also be a duplicate of whoever taught us. So the We Are Far kind is something that has to be a 24 seven thing, but Allah is merciful enough to drop things on us to remind us as the Quran says a reminder to the believers is of course a blessing and but you got to understand that or believe that at some point Allah may decide not to remind us and we have to be ready and we have to already be on 10 when that time comes because he doesn't have to remind us so when it's saying that it's a blessing it's letting you know that it's a gift it's something that doesn't have to be given now as far as the situation itself again to go deep into the, the so-called story uh, uh, the, 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 the individual the gentleman uh, who runs InfoWars what's, what's the dude's name? Alex Jones, Alex Jones who's actually a, 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 an admirer of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan uh, they had a, a monumental interview with one another, I believe about two years ago. And what the minister said to this white man, this, this hardcore, super right-wing white, white man, halfway into this interview, Alex Jones was in tears when the minister explained his stance, his divine stance around abortion, as well as other topics. But Alex Jones who I gotta give to him, he speaks his mind. You know, I don't wanna sound like people, you know, as we call them 85 percenters or so-called lost founds, when they talk about the minister, you always hear, well, I don't agree with everything that he teaches, but I agree with some of the things. I think that's the silliest thing I ever heard in my life because most of the believers and the actual registered members of the Nation of Islam have not heard everything that the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan teaches or can recite or remember off the top of our head everything that he's ever taught. So I'm not gonna say that about Alex Jones. You know, I, I, I don't agree with some of the stuff and I don't. You know, I've heard him periodically, but I cannot claim to be an expert on, but I know that he is a, uh, a super right wing uh, Caucasian. But one thing I like about him is that he's, he's, he's extremely aggressive in his beliefs and he seeks receipts in what he believes. I don't always believe he succeeds in getting those receipts, but whenever he can find receipts to back up his belief system, he absolutely does. He's not just a blowhard like a Rush Limbaugh or some of those you know that, that preceded him. And I definitely respect him more uh, than a Rush Limbaugh and most of the clowns you see on Fox News when it comes to so-called uh, right-wing uh, individuals, far right-wing individuals. And, he, and he's got a, a deep independent streak. But anyway, him, as well as a few other individuals were blocked or so-called banned from Facebook. And we, the believers who've been paying attention in the Nation of Islam, we saw this coming. For those of you that know, uh, you know, I, I, I help operate the broadcast of our beloved Western Regional Student Minister, Abdul Malik, formerly known as Tony Muhammad, every Sunday. And we meet every week uh, before his lecture on Sunday. And we talk about these kind of things. I'm not going to divulge those private uh, conversations, but we talk about the fact that we know that the enemy is tampering with our connection with the people, that the enemy is upset that we have the connection with the people that we do, 
So we're not really surprised that they that they took this step. And you know, and I'm seeing a, a myriad of different responses from people on social media. And one one response that I got to deal with first and foremost. And again, I want to remind those that are watching, hit us up with any questions or comments you may have, even if you're disagreeing with me, that's fine. Disagreement is healthy as long as it's, it's rooted in something. And I might deal with it if I have the time. But one thing I, I keep seeing is, you know, people saying, okay, well, since Facebook doesn't want to uh, respect the minister enough to, to allow him to post, let's, 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 let's ban Facebook. You know, let's, well, let's, let's, let's stand back and, and not participate in Facebook. Now, when we made that stance with Netflix and Nation Town TV was at the forefront of that, uh, it was a different thing. I can't say that it's, that it's the same situation because it's really not. And here's why. Netflix is simply an entertainment uh, a contraption. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a source of entertainment. You know, whether you want to watch a documentary, a TV show, a movie, it's only entertainment. Now, Netflix, now Facebook can be entertainment. There's a lot of foolishness on there that you can, you can waste a lot of time on Facebook really quickly. You can open it up and then before you know it, two or three hours have passed. You know, so I understand how people can look at those things the same way. And the vast majority of us, black people, aboriginal people, even believers, registered believers of the nation of Islam, we spend a lot of time on Facebook engaging or just being entertained by foolishness or just sport and play. So a lot of people look at Facebook in that same light as a Netflix HBO, whatever the case may be. But what it really is, is a communication tool. Now, right now I'm broadcasting from my cell phone. I'm using a little bit of, you know, modern equipment to make it look a little, you know, a little, a little sleeker. As you can see, we got the graphics and everything, but it's just my cell phone. But a cell phone is what you make of it. You know, I can, I, all day today, I was on the phone handling business. You know, keeping the, keeping the lights on, paying my bills, you know, gathering and bringing in the money to pay the bills. That's one way to use a cell phone. You can also get on a cell phone and call up your homie or your homegirl and gossip. You know, call up your brother and slack talk and, and backbite, you know, talk about other people. You can do whatever you want with a cell phone. And if you're using it for foolishness, then that's what it is. Or you can use it to communicate and uh, and do positive things. I myself, I use Facebook strictly to propagate the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that I'm being guided through by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's the only reason I use it. That's the only reason I came back to Facebook after years of being away from it and off of it. So, Looking at it that way, I'm not gonna boycott Facebook in that fashion. What I'm gonna do is continue to do what I've been doing at a higher rate and a more consistent rate and a more aggressive rate until they realize that Minister Farrakhan is in me and they realize I gotta go. And they realize Minister Farrakhan is the basis of Nation Town TV and they say, okay, Nation Town TV gotta go. And that's fine. There's no better, you know, it says in the Holy Quran, you know, it insinuates that there's no better death than to die the death of a Muslim. So my social media or Facebook death would be perfect if it's done propagating the faith. You know, so that first and foremost, that's what I want to cover. And, and that's just your brother's opinion. You know, you might look at it like, no, and I would agree that, you know, whenever you log on to Facebook, see Facebook, when it comes to their ad revenue, when it comes to their to their shareholders, I believe they're public now. The first thing a, a, a company wants to know if they're gonna advertise on Facebook is how many subscribers does Facebook have? How many people are posting on Facebook? So the more people that are posting, the more beneficial and profitable it is for them. When it comes to their shareholders, they wanna know that too. If all of a sudden, just 10% of their, of their, of their uh, accounts fell off, you know, that would ring an alarm to their shareholders. So I do understand it from an economic standpoint, 
but just know that when when the Netflix situation happened with the minister, I was using Netflix to entertain myself. I wasn't using it for no other reason, and it's not really able to be used for any other reason. So it was an easy move to say, okay, I'm done with this. I ain't giving them another dime of my money. So it's a little bit of a different ball game, you know. But right now, I, Nation Town TV and my personal uh, uh, presence on Facebook is a beachhead. And as FOI, we're taught and trained to set up beachheads where wherever we can set them up physical beachheads that's what that's what that's what that brother is doing when you see him with the final call newspaper that's a physical beachhead when you see us out in ranks you know whether it's just two of us uh, or, or 20 of us that's a beachhead if you see a brother with a table propped up a tent propped up with his bean pies his papers beachhead if you see a brother propagating the faith on social media beachhead propagating the faith on the radio there's some student ministers throughout the nation i know our beloved uh student minister abdul halim in houston has a has a strong radio presence as well as uh uh several other student ministers our student minister who just got a new holy name in san diego has a radio uh presence so you know <laughs> we use modern equipment in the nation of islam there's nothing old-fashioned about an foi or an mgt you know, we stay, you know, right down to the modern times and you set up a beachhead wherever your people are and our people are on Facebook. You know, we just don't just like, you know, we don't push the final call, the newspaper or the pause or the teachings in a nightclub or a strip club or, or a bar. But don't be surprised if you come out of that club, come out of that bar and you see a brother standing right across the street or right in front of the door. You know, said, man, put the number one news not controlled by the Jews in your hand, black man, and give you a final call. And that's what I feel like we should do and that I do as far as Facebook is concerned. I set up a beachhead right outside the foolishness of social media. And when you come out of that, you're going to run into me and you're going to run into nation town. So I just wanted to make sure that we got that clear. Now, another thing I want to point out, Facebook, since its inception, First, let me check with the queen. We have any uh, pertinent comments? Um, exactly. We have Lamar X. Wheeler. Exactly. It's a communication tool. You can use it to make people smarter or more of a fool. Exclamation mm. mark. That's right. Man, that's, that's, that's it. Brother Lamar, that's what it is. It's all about what you make out of it. And, and so, it, so it is with life. You know, you can live a foolish yeah. life or you can live a productive life. You know, if everybody's using it to be a fool, that doesn't mean that life itself is foolish. It just means that's that's the life that you live in. Yes, ma'am. And we also have Sister Khadija Iman. I love the minister. Wishing all a wonderful Ramadan. All praises due to Allah. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I'm glad that this is happening right before, you know, all two plus billion is really more like six, seven billion of us. We just don't all know it, but billions of Muslims will be recognize, recognizing the holy month of Ramadan. And I want to uh, say an early Ramadan Mubarak to all of our Muslim brothers and sisters, and even those who, who haven't figured out that you're Muslim yet. Ramadan Mubarak. Go ahead. And we have another beautiful comment, Brother Lamar X. Wheeler. They banned the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in countries, but he remained and rose more in the people in the, in those nations. That's right. They banned Absolutely. the minister in London, and <laughs> look at us now. Yeah, you know, and he's and that that so-called ban has no bearing on London. And, and I met some of those some of our European uh, believers. And by European, I mean <laughs> they live in Europe, not necessarily European, because the white man really does not have any uh, native land. But uh, I met them. They are beautiful, steadfast believers, and, and they own it. They own it. I'm sure many of you have heard uh, Brother Leo Muhammad, uh, as well as our student minister out of London, who recently got a new uh, uh, holy name, I believe last year, formerly known as Hillary Muhammad. But man, they those 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 European region believers, man, they go hard. 
You know, even though it's rare that they get the opportunity to be in the same place at the same time, they have to cross the pond, as they call it, just to be in under the same roof as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And we can look to those, and I'm not going to go too deep into this and, and salute and shout out to all of our London and, and international believers, but the believers and the sympathizers of the Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan in the Nation of Islam, and I got love for our sympathizers. I was one for close to 20 years before I decided to get off my rusty dusty and, and, and join the ranks. But we can learn something from our international believers who don't have the opportunity to say, oh, let me go see the minister physically. They, they don't stand, they can't stand outside unless they come to America, they don't get that opportunity to see the minister so they don't have that physical relationship with them. So they have to focus on the mental. They have to focus on aligning their mind with the minister, not so much with you know taking a selfie with them. And that time is gonna come where we're all put into that box and put into that situation where it's no longer, you know, he's not a lovely song and I miss no more. And now he's someone where we either gonna have to align our mind and become him. And that's another reason why it, this is titled, We Are Farrakhan, where we gonna have to become him or, you know, we gonna suck him. And look that up, suck him. And that's, it, which basically means death or being consumed by something. And another thing I wanna touch on, Facebook, in its, since its inception, it started as a website that was aimed at college students and the college community. In fact, it used to be called The Facebook, and they just cut the the off just for the sake of uh, brevity. But uh, it was aimed at college students. And one thing about college students, you know, whether you talk about college students 50 years ago, college students now, They've always had, you know, this anti-establishment uh, personality about them. Some of them grow out of it. Some of them, they, you know, they just decide to just start chasing dollars, and they don't, and they no longer, and they no longer care to, 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 to follow that. But I want to speak to the college uh, students who may be watching this, and if you know any college students that are watching this, regardless of their race, regardless of what they consider to be their religion. I want to talk to them for a minute because one bad word that you hear on a college campus is something called fascism. And fascism, the actual definition of fascism, is a form of radical, usually right-wing authoritarian ultranationalism characterized by dictator, <laughs> basically a dictator power forcible suppression of opposition and strong regimentation of society and of the economy, which came to prominence in the early 20th century in Europe. And I'm gonna read another part of that again. Forcible suppression of opposition. Ladies and gentlemen, the ban of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from these two uh, platforms is forcible suppression of opposition. Now they say he's dangerous. I agree. I agree with Facebook. I agree with Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is absolutely dangerous and he's been dangerous for over 60 years. He's been a, a, a clear and present danger to ignorance. He's been a clear and present danger to poverty. He's been a clear and present danger to disunity. He's been a clear and present danger to all of the ills that face this world, regardless of your race or religion, but especially the aboriginal people of this earth. He's been an absolute clear and present 24-7, 23 hours, 56 minutes, 46 seconds a day danger to all of those things. So I agree that he is a danger because you notice they didn't say he, a danger to who, a danger to what. And what he is, he's a danger to them. He's a danger to the to the idea of white supremacy, not to white people, but to white supremacy. And they understand that he's never gave us the, 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 the instruction to go and harm anyone, even those who have been harmful to him and those who have spoke harmful things about him. I'm telling you, some of us, man, hey, man, we didn't fall out of heaven. 
the FOI, even the MGT, we didn't don't let them garments, don't let these bow ties, these suits fool you. Some of us crazy as hell, man. Straight up. Crazy as hell. If the minister today said, okay, here's what I want. I want every believer to go do X, Y, and Z and, and, and bring it, bring, bring the evidence back to me. No matter how violent it may be, some of us would do it. Just because we love that man so much and because many of us we still in the hospital we we trying to get better but we ain't there yet so we coming out of a a ruthless world that this that white supremacy set up so a lot of us we start to clean up but whenever we get the opportunity to go back to our old ways some of us will gladly do it especially if we feel like we doing it for a righteous cause so the minister has that power but he has never used that power ever ever trust me on that when you look at all the fools on social media who keep the minister's name in a raggedy ass mouth if he was that kind of person that was a physical danger to people based on something as, as simple as a ideological disagreement man it would be man the, the streets would be would be would be overrun with blood of Farrakhan haters, if he had that kind of heart and that kind of mind, but he does not. He does not. But I agree that he's dangerous because he's dangerous to everything that has been a danger to the Aboriginal people of this earth and the overall betterment of this world. He, if if you are against righteousness, if you are for pro falsehood, then the minister is the he's your worst nightmare. In fact. I want to give a shout out to our brother here in Los Angeles who took some, I mean, award winning photographs. Uh, he, he's always taking top notch photographs, but shout out to brother Sermon Muhammad who took this beautiful picture over here to my right. And I want everybody watching to take a good look at that. What you're looking at is what makes the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan dangerous. This is a young man. I don't know him. Uh, you know, he's not somebody's child in, in the ranks. He's just a young man who looks like for the first time. And I, you know, I almost teared up when I saw this picture because it reminded me of the first time I had my mother used to buy the final call, you know, a lot. And she wouldn't read it. She would just throw it in the back seat where I was riding or wherever I was. She would just give it to me because she knew I liked to read and that and I like to read that kind of thing. But she always supported black people she always bought the black newspaper in our hometown and when she saw the brothers out there she wasn't big on the bean pies but when she saw the brothers out there she wouldn't stonewall them if she had the money she'd give them sometimes she'd give them something and not even want the paper but when she got the paper she would turn and give it to me so this reminds me of the first time i looked in the paper first time i saw that man with that beautiful thing on his head looked like he had the whole universe sitting on his head at the back page and i was like who is this man you know and then seeing the minister for the first time and this brother if you look very closely he's actually on the second or third page i, I examined it, i examined it early he's about on the second or third page so he's not just looking at the nipsey hustle uh article that's probably what 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 caused him to grab it but he continues to read through it and that's the beautiful thing. And that's why he's dangerous because he's not, he does not have just his phone in his hand playing uh, uh, some video game on his phone or looking at pornography or downloading some music that's telling him, you know, that, that black women, you know, are, are tools and, and that, you know, that he should go kill somebody that looks like him. He's not looking at foolishness. He's not looking at some little cartoon that's pushing homosexuality. He's looking at truth. He's looking at some, something that could, that could teach him the knowledge of God, knowledge of the devil, and then worst of all for white supremacy, knowledge of himself. And that's the secret that they've been keeping from us for over 400 years in this wilderness. And that's what makes him dangerous. That right there is that he's 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 opening up his mind. And it ain't so much about, OK, he's going to read that and he's going to grow up and be like me and be with a bow tie. You know what I mean? No, he's 
he's just going to have that love and that respect for the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that might motivate him into, into other endeavors in his life. Like our brother, may Allah be pleased, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey never put on no bow tie, fell in the ranks and, and pushed the final call and all of that. He never did that. You know, he allowed the final call to be sold in his store, but he, he never did that. But his but the, 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 the principles that he stood on were absolutely in line with the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he said it himself, you know, to put it in his word, he F's with minister who was then known as Minister Tony, student minister, student Western regional student minister Tony Muhammad. So he loves uh, Minister Abdul Malik. And I'm sure at one point, him being the avid reader that he was, I'm speaking still of Nipsey Hussle, he read the final call on a regular basis and he never paid cover price. Every brother who ran into Nipsey, there have been many brothers out here in, in LA who were running to Nipsey. He always gave them at least $50, $100, sometimes two, 200. And you know he read it because it's two of his favorite books are How to Eat to Live by the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And then he even gave a copy of Message to the Black Man to Brother T.I. So going back to the point I was saying to our college students, what is happening right now on Facebook is the most fastest thing that has happened on social media in a long time. So if you really want to stand up against fascism, don't just worry about what's going on in Tibet or some foreign country. Look at the country you live in right now. Now, I know if you're a college student, you probably have a Jewish friend or two. But put them to the test. Ask them. Say, what has the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan done that makes him a danger? And if they say, well, uh, he said the white man is the devil, challenge them on that and say, okay, well, explain your understanding of the devil and then explain to me how the white man, considering their history, is not the devil. Is not the devil. Force them, put some pressure on them, man. We got to start pressing people and, not, and stop taking things at face value. It mentions that in our lessons. And I'm not just talking about white people when they're dealing with their own, but also us. Stop taking stuff on face value, man. Look, look beneath the surface. But another thing that I that I can't sit on, even though this is obviously an assault on the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from a very powerful multi-billion dollar white supremacist platform i can't <laughs> you know i'm not surprised by that in our lessons we know that the devil is 100 percent wicked and he cannot be reformed okay so if he's 100 percent wicked and he cannot be reformed we can't spend no time, you know, begging him to respect us or our leaders. When they disrespect us or our leaders, we should look at it in the same uh, light as a cat meowing or a dog barking or a pig oinking. They just doing what they what they do, what they were supposed to do, what Allah God has allowed them to do and has, and has ordained them to do. So I'm not concerned with what they do when they do it. Okay, they just they just reminding the world of what they are. Thank you. Now I got to turn to my people, the Aboriginal people of this earth, black people, so-called brown people, even our Asian brothers and sisters, native brothers and sisters. I got to point to them because one thing that we get a lot as believers in the nation of Islam, we get a lot of questions like, man, do y'all worship Farrakhan? Man, y'all act like he just, man, he just perfect, man. Y'all, yeah, what, what, what's going on with Farrakhan? What, what is this? Why y'all why believe in it? And then, you know, they'll start, you know, uh, going into the semantics, the religious semantics. And then they want to argue about ayats and all of that and argue about the scripture. Sometimes we get that from our Hebrew Israelite brothers, our Kematologist brothers and sisters. But I want you to, to just stop for a minute and inhale and look around. Right now, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been banned from social media. So let's play a little game of deduction. Instead of talking about who they have banned, let's talk about who they have not banned. You can still, I'm still getting fake friend requests 20 a day advertising porn. 
20 a day. And I report each one. So I thinking that maybe that'll slow it down. It seemed like it's just speeding it up. I get 20 or 30 more every day. You have music constantly being promoted on Facebook, which promotes the worst things in humanity. Violence, murder, disrespect of women. And for us, the Aboriginal people, black on black murder. I mean, it's funny how many real niggas there are in the, in the rap game and in the streets. But, you know, George uh, 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 Zimmerman is still walking around here getting fat. So when they talk about how hard they are, how many guns they have, how real they are, they're only saying that, that that's who they are amongst their own people and in their own communities. And nobody says anything about that. You know, pay attention to who the white man runs from. Pay attention to who white supremacy is afraid of. Even if it's an, a white person. What's the guy's name? Infowars? Alex Jones. Even a Alex Jones. You know what they hate about Alex Jones? I mentioned it before. He comes with receipts. He comes with receipts. They don't like that. They don't like that because they want you to believe in something on face, pun intended, face value. They want you to just be told something and then you run with it. They want you to see a meme that says, you know, the Nation of Islam killed Malcolm X and then just run with it. Don't look up no COINTELPRO. Don't look up no public government documents that's just out there for the whole world to see. Because this devil has matured from a garden snake to a dragon, so he don't care who sees him no more. Because he know he's made us dumb enough to take everything on face value. So when you have somebody like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who teaches all of us in the Nation of Islam to define words, to study root knowledge, not just the branch knowledge that's hanging on the tree that got the fruit hanging off of it, but going to the root of everything we learn. The root of everything we learn, and that is very dangerous to white supremacy. And speaking of root knowledge, I, I, I posted something two days ago on Facebook before this whole, uh, all these shenanigans popped up. <laughs> and I said, you know, as a message to my fellow believers, that we're taught root knowledge. And root knowledge doesn't just mean root knowledge of ourselves, root knowledge of our, our, our origins in this world. You know, that's something that so-called woke Negroes love to talk about all day. Oh, we the real children of Israel, okay. Oh, we, 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 we from Kemet, oh, okay. We the lost tribe of Shabazz, okay. But in the Nation of Islam, we're taught to have root knowledge about not just knowledge of self, but also knowledge of God and then knowledge of the devil. I said this two days ago before this ban was, was announced. And I pointed that out because, like I said earlier, some of us, we come into a, 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 a bevy of knowledge and we come, we start to come out of our grave clothes like Lazarus in the scripture, in the Bible. And we start to come out of our grave clothes, meaning our, our, our dead mind state, but we still have on that dead t-shirt, that dead, you know, and, and I ain't banging when I say dead. I ain't talking about red. I mean dead as in a dead mind state type of thinking that's clothing our mind. But none of us are 100% out of that. The only one in our midst that I can say is 100% taking off the dead clothes and put on a new man is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So since we're still putting on the new man, some of us have reactions that take us right back to the death that we're trying to climb out of. So when somebody comes out and says something disrespectful about the Nation of Islam on social media or whatever, Many of us jump at the opportunity to bang on somebody that looks like us. And what it does is it's like a flea, flicker, a flea flicker in football. It's a trick play for those of you who, didn't want, who never watched sports. In football, they got a trick play called a, a flea flicker. 
That's where the quarterback hands the ball off to the running back. And if you are a linebacker, a strong safety, even a corner, a DB, and you really got your head on the swivel, and you just you just you just a, you just a head hunter, as soon as you see that ball being handed off to the running back, you pounce. You give you don't care about the receivers no more. You don't care about the tight end. You don't care about nothing. You going after that ball carrier. And nine, 90 percent of the time, that's the right move on the football field. Go after the ball. But then right after he hands off the ball to the running back, the running back stops before it passes the line of scrimmage, turns around, flicks it right back to the quarterback. The quarterback takes it. He sees three receivers wide open down the field and just tosses it up there. And that's one of the most successful trick plays in football because it takes advantage of the aggressiveness of a defense. You don't run a play like that against a smart defense. You only run that against defenses that just be just chomping at the bit to just take somebody's head off. And they go wherever the ball goes, which 90% of the time is the right way to operate. So a smart offensive coordinator says, okay, let's do a play action. Let's do a flea flicker. Let's do something that takes advantage of the, the ignorant aggressiveness of this defense. So I'm not going to say his name. This dude who's been having the nation in his mouth for quite some time because it's very beneficial for him. It gets him a lot of views. It gets him a lot of opportunities and even makes a little bit of money for him. So I ain't mad at him. He's, he's following a winning formula. But he's he's back he's back on the on 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 the on the uh, on the clown stuff, and you know it's a lot of believers who consider themselves defending Farrakhan that that just just jumping right on it. And while this was happening, Facebook was reviewing the minister and getting prepared to build up a case against the minister to ban him. Now, I'm concerned. That when the pressure really gets put on Mark Zuckerberg to explain to the world why a man that has done so much good can be banned and considered dangerous to mankind. It would be really embarrassing if Mark Zuckerberg says, oh, wait a minute. And then he pulls out receipts and says, oh, here's a message from a honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan follower, so-and-so ex Muhammad." who said that he he can't wait to catch so-and-so little little Kimmet slipping in a in an alley somewhere and knock his head off this was posted on uh january 18th 2018 at four o'clock oh and then i have about a thousand more just like that y'all want to see him if mark zuckerberg goes live on his own platform and then is dropping receipt after receipt of negroes saying negro stuff outside of the realm of what we're taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, that would be very embarrassing. And then the worst part is it takes our eye off of the play that's really unfolding. Mm -hmm. I use that analogy of a play unfolding, a flea flicker. The actual play is not the handoff. The play is the quarterback, the leader of the offense, not the running back. You notice how a lot of teams in the NFL, even today, we got more black quarterbacks, but most teams in the NFL, quarterback is a white man, running back is a black man. So it's a lot of little Negro running backs that we biting on. We biting. You know, we, we see them, we see that play action, and we bite it. And then that quarterback sit back there and just toss it 60 yards down the field. And then we walk into the sideline with our head down. Man, they always run. Uh... So let's stop being so reactive and being so easily tricked and let's keep our eye on the root knowledge, not just knowledge of self, not just knowledge of God, but also knowledge of the devil. So I just wanted to make sure we touched on that. Sister, do we have any questions or comments? have another comment brother lamar x wheeler i wonder why master for muhammad is making this facebook instagram move great question we gotta try and strive to look down the line of time that's the right eyes of Allah. that's right you know and master for muhammad as we're taught 
in the nation of Islam. He is, is. Notice the tense I'm using. He is God in the person. And, you know, I kind of, from the roster here in Mosque 27, I kind of poked a little fun at some of the older believers who have been hesitant to to propagate the faith and, and on on the internet. And I told them, hey man, if you believe in the mother wheel, that, 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 that half mile by half mile plane, you know, with 1500 bomber planes and all the technology that's on the mother wheel, how can you be scared of Facebook? But I, you know, that's a good question, brother, because that shows, as I said earlier, that shows the mercy of Allah. Allah is merciful because he could just let us continue to think that defending Farrakhan just, just means one thing or the other. We got to be balanced. You know, I saw a lot of believers popping up and saying, well, man, you know, OK, well, you know, the minister, he did the Million Man March long before when Mark Zuckerberg was 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 a preteen. You know, before any of this existed, the Internet existed, but social media, as we know it now, didn't exist. So let's just go out there with the final call. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we should have been on that. We should have never came out of that. You know. But whenever we get too top heavy or bottom heavy, it's it's a blessing when Master Far Muhammad and when the and when the wind start blowing in a way that gets us back on point and wakes us up to the fact that. You know, we have to come at our people, and I'm talking to all of us, not just registered members of the Nation of Islam, anybody that has any kind of wisdom or knowledge between your ears and you want to give it to your people. First of all, if you have it and you don't have it for the sake of helping your people, then you just a nigga. You just a smart, you just a smarty art nigga. You ain't, you ain't, you, you, you not, you, you are less valuable to our community than a gangbanger, a pimp, or a prostitute, in my humble opinion. Because you have a little bit of knowledge, but you just got it so, you know, you can either trick somebody out some money or just so people can look at you and say, oh, he's really smart. You know, we don't need no more Negroes like that. We we, we full. We got enough. But, uh, you know, when we look at things like this and when we're reminded, that's always a good thing because... We have to come at our people the same way Iblis in the Holy Quran promised that he would come at us from the beginning in the straight path. But he, he mentioned four directions from their left to their right, from before them and behind them, meaning he coming at them from every direction. And we have to come at our people from every direction. We shouldn't be no one trick Muslim, no one trick conscious Negro. We can't be just doing one thing. You know, do what you can, you know, do what you can, do what you must propagate on Facebook, propagate. People should people should hear your Islam and see your Islam from a mile away. As soon as they come in your page, they should just get swamped by Islam. As soon as you come around the corner, they should all oh, go to this Muslim. Yeah, brother, I know black man is God. I, I, I feel you. I mean, we should just be wearing our people down with the truth no matter where it is. It ain't no old-fashioned way of being a Muslim or a new. Do it all. Allah allows all of these avenues so we can walk down all these avenues. We're taught that Master Fahd Muhammad came to us, made himself known in July 1930. And when he made himself known, he didn't come and set up a concert in a, in a football stadium somewhere and said, you know, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I'm God. And then dropped the mic and, and walked off the stage. That ain't how it went. He came 9,000 miles by himself in the Detroit area of Detroit, Michigan, and was going down street by street, door to door, knocking on doors under the cover of darkness under the guise of being a door-to-door -door salesman selling silk. And when they, when they would open the door, he would make sure he said something that intrigued them enough to open the door even wider so he can teach them more about themselves, more about the devil, and more about God. So that's what Master Far Muhammad does. He used every avenue. When the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was in our midst, he used the radio. He would, he would, he would use something that even the white man didn't use a lot of in corporate America at that time. 
some of the older believers will bear me witness, they called it piping in, where they would pipe in radio messages from the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan became a national uh, household name from teaching on the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's radio show. And back then, a black man or black entity entity having control over a radio station was big because it wasn't like Facebook accounts today where anybody can go on Facebook and start up a page about anything. You can you can start up a page about taking pictures of dogs with, with top hats on. It, 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 it's free and you can do it immediately. But to get radio time and a radio station and to, and to broadcast every week, it costs a lot of money and, and it took a lot of strings being pulled for that to happen and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was at the forefront of that you know it was years before corporate America started you know using you know uh, a satellite and, and, and piping in uh, radio messages or conference calls from their corporate offices that's something that, that the messenger was doing straight up so you know whenever there's a technology especially that's used for communication Muslims should gang up on it. We should we should get on it so quick and we should be what we say we are. We have, a, I believe, a comment or a question. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But in our social media guidebook, our social media guidebook, early on in the book, I believe it's like one of the first two or three pages, it opens up by saying that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when it comes to defense, we say we all defending Farrakhan, and we love this opportunity. What's going on, Detroit? Shout out to our people out here in South Central Los Angeles. But uh, it's funny, we was just talking about Detroit and the brother that I affectionately call Detroit because he's from Detroit, just walked down the street. But anyway, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that our best defense at a time like this is to be who we say we are. And I'm going to touch on that deeper in a moment, but I believe we have a comment or a question. So yes, sir. We have some beautiful comments and lovely engagement from um, our family in the comment section. We have Brother X, Brother, excuse me, Brandon X Clay. We must learn to use any knowledge that we have for the benefit of the advancement of our own. We all can be agents for the enemy on accident mm. or on purpose. Absolutely. Humility is what grows when God knowledge is present. That's right. We have, <laughs> we also have um, our beloved sister, Mariam. That's one of my one, I mean, day one sisters. I am old. <laughs> you not old, sis. <laughs> I am old and I'm not afraid Come of on. Facebook, Go Instagram, ahead. or Twitter, <laughs> Go or ahead. Zuckerberg. That's, That's right. <laughs> do for self, NFA. And family, when she says NFA, that is never fall again. That's right. NFAstudios.com, the Nation of Islam our own broadcasting um, company That's where right. we have our own original content and one-of-a-kind lectures from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Right. The link will be posted on the page on our timeline. Go check it out and subscribe. And we also have, um, again, we have um, Brother we have brother Derek 3, 3X Minor. Like I said on my page, we give a diet of truth until our people are well fed and That's the right. enemy chokes or pukes i like that and right. again brother x brandon x clay only post the teachings or us pushing muhammad that's right that's sister right. mia detroit here too assalamu alaikum detroit thank you sister mia yes ma'am and uh and i like what uh brother brandon i like i like all those comments were beautiful shout out to our our viewers on Nation Town TV. Uh, but, you know, I like what they said, but what Brother Brandon said about, man, just only push the teachings. But only, I agree with that, but I'll add this to it. And I said this uh, uh, from the rostrum to the believers uh, of Moss 27 when I was given the opportunity to speak with our beloved Western Regional student minister. But not only push the teachings as far as straight out the book, like lessons, English lesson number C1, Holy Quran, whatever the case may be, 
but pe put push push the teachings in action you know and by showing photographs on your facebook page of your family you know uh, you just you just being happy you doing things you getting up you you know if you got a business you, you know showing things and you starting your business and going through you know dropping you know uh advice about how to start a business advice about parenting if you're a successful parent advice about you know if you've been married for a long time like our sister mariam i ain't gonna say how long she's been married because she she only 33 years old That's uh, right. uh, but, uh ladies and gentlemen she only about 33 but uh but if you if you if you're doing anything that's good for yourself good for our people you know put that out there show positivity that's the teachings in action so whatever you're doing just make sure it's positive and as i was saying before as the most honorable elijah muhammad said excuse me our best defense this is the messenger talking so i i gotta i gotta i gotta i gotta slow this down because we give a little bit of reverence even some of us that are not in the nation we give reverence to something when we know it's a quote from the messenger or the minister but we gotta really deal with words he said the best the what best the best defense at a time like this is to be who you say you are and that's for all the aboriginal people even if you're not in the nation you say oh you conscious you you this you know you you smart you knowledgeable Okay, be like that 24-7. Not just when you come across a Muslim and you call yourself one to debate. Be just as conscious when you pat when you walk past that Muslim after your little week debate and then you walk up in the liquor store. That we see that every week <laughs> in the nation of Islam when we out pushing the program. Brother Mike Cove, sister Mike Cove, say something slick. You know, G I love everybody. Jesus saves. And then they walk right up in the liquor store and come out. And I'm not judging my people. But let's make sure that our whole picture is being a defense. And I said, a brother, our brother Jabril uh, Muhammad, I believe out of Philadelphia, very sharp brother. He's one of my friends on Facebook. He, he dropped a beautiful post today about that same thing, about us just being what we say we are. And I used a uh, an analogy. I, you know, first of all, I thank the brother for putting that wisdom out there. But also, I said, think about it. If there was somebody, and this might come, this might actually come to reality, because you got Negroes arguing over whether the earth is flat or not. So this might actually be the next argument. Imagine somebody who didn't believe in the sun, the sun in the sky, S-U-N, and they didn't believe that the sun was really bright and that it even really exists and that was just like some hologram up in the sky or that it really wasn't even in the sky if somebody said that the first thing you would do is just point to the sky right you would just say damn dude look look up what you think that is and they would look up even on a cloudy day they'd still be able to see the light of the sun and feel the warmth of the sun and then look at the ground and see the grass that sprouted up because of the light of the sun the trees because of the sun even us the aboriginal people now the sun is is a detriment to <laughs> certain other people to the devil but to us it gives us vitamins in our skin so that dude would be an absolute idiot for claiming that the sun is is false or that it's not as br bright as advertised all you would have to do is point to it so we want to get for those of us who are believers in the nation of islam those of us that are sympathizers it's enough of us combined to where if we just be what we say we are 24 7 i ain't talking about being perfect just striving to be what we say we are not just out our mouth but in our actions any slander that came out of anybody's mouth on any platform of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Master Far Muhammad, the Holy Quran, or anything we believe and follow, any slander would absolutely melt like an ice cube on the surface of the sun if people could look around or look up, see a Muslim and say, no, nah, minister ain't dangerous. He ain't dangerous to nothing that's, that's righteous. Look at these Muslims. They clean, they good, they do good things, they live good lives. They don't they don't participate in foolishness. No. 
that man is, is saying something right. He got he got all these people who used to be deep in the mud and now they you know no nah, no nah. that's how that clean glass dirty glass concept can be our benefit we can't get to the point where our islam is just verbal or if our islam is just exterior it got to be deeper than your bow tie got to be deeper than your headpiece you know this is the teachings of the most honorable elijah muhammad not your brother you know the most honorable elijah muhammad said our best defense not a good defense, not a defense. Our best defense is to be what we say we are. And no other defense. Because last time I checked, I think, I think best is at the top of the list. I don't think it's too much that's better than best. Best means best. Like the Holy Quran says, Allah is the best knower. So I don't think nothing comes above that. So this is the best way when we strive to be righteous Muslims. On a, on a daily and hourly basis regardless of what this 100% wicked non-reformable devil says does or doesn't do now nation town tv before we close we only got about a few more minutes nation town tv we strive to not just talk about problems but also try to deal with some solutions and i'm sure that's what a lot of people want to hear and i and i and i'm glad that we becoming a, a, a community that's starting to look, you know, deeply toward more solutions and not just talking about problems. What are some of the solutions now that Facebook has decided <laughs> that they're going to ban the Honorable Minister Lewis Farquhar? You know, I already told you, I'm just going to keep banging like I've been banging, you know, but let's look at some, some of the solutions. And this is for all of us, the registered members of the nation, as well as, uh, you know, our, our, our beloved uh, sympathizers and 85 percenters lost found who, who love the minister. But one solution is to just come off the sidelines. Come off the sidelines. Now, I was a sympathizer for a long time. So I say to my sympathizer, believers, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan himself, this past year, Savior's Day, he called on all those that love and respect him who are not in the ranks are uh, not coming to the mosque not participating in nation functions to start doing so that was that came directly from him you know if you're not in the nation if you're not in the ranks that's fine less than two percent of the american public is enlisted in the united states military and it's the most powerful carnal military in the world so we don't need everybody we try to get everybody. We try to make all men and boys join the FOI, but everybody ain't built for this. I'm still figuring out if I'm built for it. I don't think any of us really know until we leave this. There's been a lot of brothers who look like they were good, they were built for it, and then before they left us, before they left this earth, they turned hypocrite. So it ain't for everybody. But even if you're not in the ranks, when you see that brother out there with that final call, with that bean pot, support him and buy and by supporting them, you're automatically supporting the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Put your money where your mouth is, you know, for the believers, for those of us that are in the ranks. You know, put your time, which is actually a more valuable currency than money. Because if I give someone $20 right now, I can go make that $20 back quick, quick. If I give you my time, I'll never get that time back. So to the believers, man, use your time wisely. Master Far Muhammad said, fall in, fall into the mosque every time the doors open. I know everybody can't do that. You know, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he want us out there with that number one news not controlled by the Jews, the Final Call newspaper. Get out there. Help. Do something around the mosque. To those who are not in the mosque, do something that's in line with what you learned from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Or is he just a lovely song to you? So that's one of the first solutions. I think we have a comment, and then I'm going to go to some of the few solutions, but we are running short on time. Yes, we have a beautiful comment, Sister Nakima Mori. I am not in the in the nation, but the nation saved my life mm. in so many ways. All praise belongs to Allah. 
thank you, sister, for your testimony. We have Brother Michael Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, Muslim. We have to build our own means of communication as our ancestors use the drum to communicate. We must determine what means of communication that we're mm. going to use and begin to build our own platform in all aspects of life. Know for sure that the devil hands up. That the devil hands are too short to box with the God That's of right. you mighty nation and accomplish what you will. We stand with Allah God, his Christ, and his divine reminder in our midst, leader, teacher, and guide, the honorable Minister Louis Fire. All praises due to Allah. For our sister, uh, I, I disagree. I don't care how many times you been to the mosque or haven't been to the mosque or how long it's been since you've been to the mosque you absolutely in the nation of islam you're just not registered but you're a muslim you know we're all born muslim muslim just means that you are born to submit to the will of allah and that's everything in nature uh but that was a beautiful comment you absolutely a muslim you that you that army that they don't see so i thank you for that comment for our brother absolutely you know, I used the uh, analogy earlier today on a Facebook post that, you know, when you pour water into something, that water fills every hole and crevice that it falls into. And it doesn't care what it is. And if and if there's any type of uh, uh, opportunity for anything to grow from that water, it grows. So you pour water into anything and it fills it up and it fortifies it. So, no Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, no Twitter. It don't matter. We're going to fill up whatever crevice we have to go into. Master Far Muhammad said he would climb a mountain 40 miles high to teach one. Teach one. Climb a mountain. And then he said he would bite off the heads of rattlesnakes to teach us. So, that's Master Far Muhammad saying what I'm saying. Whatever any means necessary. Before Malcolm X said that, when he deviated, he got that from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. By any means necessary, let's go get our people. As long as those means are righteous and within what we believe, go get our people, man. Stop discriminating about what we're really doing is using deceptive intelligence. If it's something that we don't know how to do or we don't like to do, then you know, you know, we use what we do like to do and try to beat up on those who do what they like to do and what they good at. Man, do do it however you can do it, you know, and be be a righteous bliss, a righteous bliss. Come at them from every angle. Now, as I was saying about solutions, make sure that you support nation products. Make sure you supporting the nation. You can support the nation. All you can go to noi.org right now and donate. Donate one dollar. Just donate one dollar every week just donate a dollar leave it and then walk off you know support something that you feel like is being you know uh, uh unlawfully attacked also <laughs> i want to give a special shout out to our first officer out here in los angeles uh brother james a muhammad because he's got a he got a quotable man that i've been waiting for the opportunity to drop on nation town tv and now i'm gonna drop it he uses the term sometimes for some of us called R&B Muslims <laughs> and by R&B Muslim he means a, a Muslim that you know you ain't gonna find them out there you know doing the first work you ain't gonna find them out there grinding you know you ain't gonna find them you know uh, answering the call of duty you know but you'll find them you know Savior's Day major events some people call them event Muslims but he coined the term R&B Muslims you know, and then you have some of us who are like groupies and personality worshipers where you don't see us unless that person that we like is teaching or whatever the case may be. That kind of Muslim or even sympathizer, we we got to kill that. This, you know, we at war. If it's not apparent by now, it never will be. So that we got to deal with that. No more R&B Muslims, you know, no more, no more personality worship. We just got to get the job done. And then... Let's settle our differences. That's another instruction that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan gave us. Settle our differences. We got to settle our differences. And I, and I want to give y'all a homework assignment on Nation Town TV. I want you to go to YouTube. And I want you to look up a lecture from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan called God is Present. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. God is Present. 
It's an old lecture that was filmed and done out here in Los Angeles, California in 1983. And I want you to watch the full lecture, but I especially want you to fast forward to about two hours and 36 minutes into the video. Two hours, 36 minutes into the video. And in that part, he talks about something that has been bothering me, especially on social media and Facebook and that some some believers have been participating in. And he says, and I'm paraphrasing, the white man has his foot in all of our backsides. This is the minister talking, paraphrasing though. The white man has his foot in all of our backside, but we're busy debating ayats. This is the minister talking. He says, put the debate down and get this devil out of our hair. This is the minister talking. Minister, if you, if you if you follow the minister, if you respect the minister, then then fall in and do what you're supposed to do. Put the debates down, man. Stop dealing with the dumb devils, the little baby devils that the white man has created out of some of us, and let's focus on the real enemy. And a lot of times that en enemy has set up a beachhead in our head, and we got to deal with that first and settle our differences. Also, let's fast from as we pulling up on the holy month of Ramadan. Let's let's fast on foolishness. Let's fast on foolishness, man. You know, <laughs> and this is for the grown folks. This is this is just for grown folks. You know, even though grown, we don't really consider grown what the white man does. But let's just say 18 and over. This is for grown folks. If you really grown now, if you still a little boy, you still a little girl, this ain't for you. But for grown folks, let's fast on foolishness for for at least the holy month of Ramadan. You know, let's let's not get into arguments on social media about Marvel movies. Marvel movies about the next celebrity that gets because that's the next distraction. Once we do mount up and we really going hard on this devil, the next distraction, Kanye going to say something stupid. R. Kelly going to get, you know, arrested again or some other, you know, let's let's fast on the foolishness for a minute. Fast on foolishness and just focus on defending this man and just defending our people let's fast on foolishness and with that said dear brothers and sisters uh we about to go into something that's called our friday night study group which is titled self-improvement is the basis for community development i know on the far east coast and even in the midwest y'all have already you know either started your your study group or ending your study group but for those on the West Coast, if you didn't hit up study group, make sure you hit it up. For the sisters on either coast, go to your class tomorrow morning. For the That's brothers right. on either coast, go to your class on Monday night. All of that is going to make us a better defense of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and our people in general. So we are all Farrakhan. If, if we listen to him and we follow him and we use that best defense... The best defense is to be what we say we are. Whether you call yourself a Muslim, you call yourself a smart individual, you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite, all of those things call on some type of action in your life, not just words. So be what you say you are. That's our best defense against this enemy from whatever direction he comes from. So with that said, dear brothers and sisters, I got to get in here and get to work. And with that said, I want to thank all of our viewers. Uh, for touching down make sure you tune in next week inshallah we will be on next week also make sure that you support nationtownstore.com continue to support all of the programs that we share here on nationtown.com our sister uh with uh liberated sisters uh you know malcolm flex everything you see on nation town tv here on facebook until they shut us i want to make them shut us down i can't wait to die the social media death of a Muslim. I can't wait. Shut us down, Facebook. Like brother being next. Man, shut us down. I cannot wait to be shut down. So I can, I, man, I, man, I'll be walking around here with my chest stuck out so much. Man, Facebook had to shut my ass down. All praise due to Allah. So with that said, dear brothers and sisters, I thank y'all for tuning in, and I leave you as I greeted you with the words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.
this message. Please, 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 please.